Uh, I greet you all in the wonderful and precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Uh, I pray that you are all blessed. Uh, this evening, I'd like to thank Pastor Frank and Rita Boisem, along with the Church Council and its members, for another awesome opportunity of sharing God's Word with you. Uh, for all of you that have joined in, uh, I pray that you will be blessed by the Word of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for your loving kindness. I thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us. I thank you, Lord, for the breath that you have given us so that we could see another day. And I pray, Lord, that even as each and every heart that's bowed in your presence prepares and to listen to your word, I pray, Lord, that your word will find an abiding place in our hearts. And I pray, Lord, that we will take your word and we will share it to the world, to the lost, to the needy, O oh Lord. Because, Lord, you need us to do your great commission, and that is to go out and preach the gospel. I love you, I praise you, and I worship you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Beloved, tonight I'd like to talk to you about a, a very a well-known man in the Bible. And uh, his name is Jonah. Uh, my word of encouragement for tonight is we should be like Jonah. We may not be as lucky as Jonah to get a second chance, but we have an opportunity to be a Jonah. If you look in the Bible, you see God chose Jonah. right? Let's read in the book of Jonah chapter 1. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa where he found a ship bound for the port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. You see, beloved, God called Jonah. God knew that Jonah was the man for the job. God chose Jonah to preach the good news. But Jonah feared. Jonah doubted. Instead of, being, of him being obedient to God and you know that still voice of God, he chose to run away. God told him, my son Jonah, head for Nineveh. The people there need a savior. They need to know of the savior. Go and preach to them. But Jonah was afraid because Nineveh was a corrupt city. There were lots of violent people there. And I'm sure Jonah knew this. And I'm sure Jonah knew in the back of his head, hey, if I go there, these people will have me. You know, they will kill me. And fear set in. And guess what? Jonah tried to run away. But let me tell you something tonight. When God chooses you and God has a plan for you, you cannot run away. You cannot hide from the plan and the purpose that God has in store for you. As we all know, Jonah took another boat heading for Tarshish. And along the way, we see God's glory. We see that God is in control. During his voyage, there was a great storm. And I believe that God created that storm to get Jonah's attention. In the book of Psalms, chapter 22, verse 28 reads, For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. Beloved dominions, all authority belongs to God. He is in control. And he was in control of Jonah's situation. He was in control of Jonah's life. And during that storm, the people were scared on that boat. Guess what? They threw their luggage out. They threw their valuables off the boat, trying to make it lighter during the storm, just so that everyone could be saved. But when God is in control, you and I, will fail if we die if we try to do things on our own strength as long as you and i try to to twist the arm of god we will never succeed we need to allow god's plan and purpose to unfold and be revealed in our lives we need to allow the holy spirit to lead us and guide us let's get back to the boat after throwing all their valuables out of the boat they realized that the boat was still about to sink and then eventually they started to cast lots and then Jonah was asleep in the boat and somebody got his attention and got him out and he acknowledged that God is in control. He confessed to the people on board that he was running away from God. And God opened his eyes to see that God is in control and he turned around telling the people, throw me overboard and all will be well. After him telling the people that man 
in the flesh will try to do everything in the flesh to save. But when God is in control, that will not work. They tried everything in their power to save Jonah, to keep him on board, but they failed. And the storm was only calmed once they did what Jonah told them to do, throw him overboard. Now, in the story, Nineveh was a great city, but it was full of sin. And here we see that mankind, mankind is accountable to God. We see this in the book of Jonah, chapter 1, verse 2. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. You see, God is all-knowing. God is all-seeing and he's all-powerful. He knew that the hearts of the people in the city of Nineveh were sin, were full of sin and were corrupt. And God chose Jonah to go there. Now, after they threw Jonah overboard, God is still in control. He allowed a great fish to swallow him. And that fish God chose was actually to protect him and for him to come right with God and to acknowledge who God is. And he spent three days and three nights in the fish's belly, beloved. And guess what? Within that time, he had an encounter with this great and mighty God. He repented, number one. He asked God to help him. He asked God to give him a new lease on life, a new direction. And guess what? God allowed Jonah a second chance to make it right. Sometimes, beloved, you and I won't get a second chance. So the chance that you and I have now, make the best of it. Not all of us may be lucky as Jonah, where we got three days and three nights. But right now, you and I have an opportunity of sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, to share about his death and resurrection, to share about his great love and mercy. There are people out there, like the people in the city of Nineveh, that needs a savior, that needs to get to know God's word. Are you and I prepared to share the great gospel of Jesus Christ? Are we prepared to show the world the way, to share the light, to be the salt of the earth? Beloved, that's a challenge. Let us be like Jonah, but let us be better than Jonah. Let's not wait for a second chance. Let us make use of the life that we have now, the breath that we have now to share the good news. Let me tell you something. And I see this in the book of Luke as well. People can change. God knew that the people of Nineveh could change. Right? But Jonah doubted. But then he saw who God was. And he allowed God to use him in a mighty way. Eventually, the whale vomited Jonah. And he listened to God. He went to Nineveh and he preached the gospel. Right? Now in the book of Luke, chapter 8, verse 15 reads, but the seed on good soil stands for those with noble and a good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering produce a crop. You see, beloved, when you share the word with someone, you know, all God wants you to do is share the word. If that person's heart has fertile soil, it will be the word of God will be preserved in that heart. And it will produce a good crop. How? Just by you sharing God's word. You know, I once heard that uh, one plants the seed, another waters, but God gives life. Every Sunday morning or every time you come online, there is a seed being planted. And then in the next sermon, a little bit of water is added to that seed. But it's only God who gives life. Tonight, let's allow God in our life so that we can see life. And God says, when I give life, I will give it abundantly, right? God wants us to enjoy life in Him. And beloved, when we enjoy life in Him, He wants us to share the good news so that others around us can share in His glory and also inherit heaven and eternal life. Remember, people can change. Never write someone off. Never say, oh, he does not deserve God's word. He, Jonah tried that. 
and he went through a boat experience. He went through a fish experience. But remember, God knows all. You and I sometimes, we are like Jonah, we doubt. But let us change our mindset. Rep repentance requires work. And I see this in the book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 41. The men of Nineveh will stand up at judgment with this generation and condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And now something greater than Jonah is here. Something greater than Jonah is here is Jesus Christ. He came, he paid the price, and guess what? He left the Holy Spirit. So tonight I hope the Holy Spirit is touching you right now. And I pray that you will allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you to minister to the hearts of men and women. It's not difficult to tell someone that Jesus loves them. Encourage them. There is a hope and a future in Jesus. And you and I have this great commission to share the gospel. So tonight, beloved, let us not try to run. Let us not try to hide. But let us do what God has commanded and commissioned us to do. And that is to share the gospel. Like I said, we might not get a second chance like Jonah, but believe you me, we can help now in this time to encourage someone, to bless someone's heart, to lead them to Jesus Christ. So I pray with the short word, you are blessed and you will do what God has called us to do. And that is to share the word and to tell the world about Jesus because Jesus loves us. And it's not in his will for anyone to perish, but for all to inherit heaven and to share his glory. So beloved, let us do the will of God. I pray that you are blessed. Let us pray. Father, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word. I pray, Lord, that you will use us like never before. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use us. Take our weak hands in your strong hands. Make us bold. Or grant us the boldest, Lord, to share the good news. Yes, Lord, the good news of Jesus and his great love. I praise you, Father. Your word says that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Raise us up tonight, Lord, as laborers in your vineyard, so that we could go out and save this world that's lost in sin, O oh Lord. I praise you, Father, and I worship you. I pray, Lord, for each and every heart that's bowed in your presence, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you will touch them, Lord, with a fresh and a new anointing. Touch their lips of clay even as they share your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Have a blessed week. Take care. God bless.